Hi, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the launch uh, uh, video session of uh, Heartbeat Run on the occasion of World Heart Day. Today is 29th of September, and uh, it's, it's celebrated as World Heart Day. And uh, and we have a very quick half an hour session. Uh, we'll keep it as crisp as possible, uh, not too much, but just you know touch upon the highlights of this day and uh, why we are doing this. And along with me is Dr. Ashish Contractor from uh, Reliance Hospital. Welcome to the show, Dr. Contractor. Very happy to have you here. Thank you. Good to be here. So, Dr. Uh, uh, without much ado, uh, I will run through a quick presentation of about five slides, ten slides, uh, just one minute each, about ten minutes, and then we'll talk about you know the significance of World Heart Day and you know what we intend to do in World Heartbeat Run, and then. We will take it up from there. We'll show a small video clipping, and if there are any questions and answers from the audience, we'll take those question and answers. Shouldn't take more than 20, 25 minutes. Thank you for no. taking out time from your busy schedule. No, no, not at all. Okay. And uh, for those who don't know Dr. Ashish Contractor, <laughs> and I will not go into every single aspect of uh, of his of his you know illustrious uh, career mm -hmm. profile, but he's a cardiologist, of course. He's also India's only ACSM uh, director for examining ACSM students. Uh, an athlete himself, uh, very strong triathlete, completed his last, uh, you know, Ironman uh, in Turkey about six eight months back, uh, about a 140 half marathon for those who don't know, and uh, has been my cardiologist and was very instrumental in my journey of you two can run and and therefore to you know also the heartbeat run. So welcome to the show, Doctor Contractor. Thank you. Are you able to hear me clearly enough? Yes, absolutely clear and loud and clear. Absolutely. Okay, fine. Lovely. okay. So we will we'll get on with a small presentation I made to bring out the significance of heart disease and World Heart Day and all that. Uh, not too much, not too this. I'll just quick go, go through it, and then we will get into you know your bit where you tell us how you are happy to associate with us and how what yeah. we need to do from a cardiac disease prevention yeah. perspective. Okay. So let me pull up the slide. So I'm assuming you can see the slide properly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Good. So sometimes this technology is a little bit. <laughs> yes. So today yeah. is the launch, and uh, we're not going to take much time. Very quick, uh, this on cardiovascular diseases. Uh, as of last, uh, there's about 17.9 million, one crore, 79 lakhs uh, people have died worldwide. 31 percent of all global deaths are because of this. In India, we are about 10% of that of that share we have, and about 1.7 million, which means 17 lakh deaths occur every year because of heart disease. 4,000 people die a day. 80 deaths occur each day in Mumbai. You know, in Mumbai, 80 people die because of heart disease every day. Uh, one in three above the age of 40 are, are at immediate risk. And if you take that to COVID, the COVID numbers are still, as of today morning, less than a lakh. So though for COVID, you have had you know a lockdown and all these things. But when it has come to, you know, heart disease, uh, you know, we are not paying as much attention is what we feel. Uh, World Heart Day is observed on 29th September each year. Uh, it was started in 1999. So it's about 21 years now that the World Heart Foundation Federation and along with the World Health Organization decided that they must do something about cardiac disease. Uh, it is adopted by all international cardiac organizations. And, you know, every year they have a theme. So some years it is woman, some years this. This year the theme is use heart. What does use heart mean? Uh, they are they, according to the theme, uh, they are saying use the heart in using your head to understand what it takes to have a healthy lifestyle, change your behavior, and lead a better quality of life in the future. Use your influence as an individual to set an example for your loved ones. You know, adopt healthy practices as a healthcare professional to make patients make a positive change for their heart health. <clears throat> 
as a as an as, as a employer i mean this is something big you know every employer they are calling to invest in the heart health of their employees and as a government of course you know to do all the initiatives like you know uh, taxing sugar stopping smoking reducing air pollution that's a very big thing air pollution is known to trigger uh, you know heart disease and lastly they are saying that use your compassion and see that those with heart related conditions are given better protection because in the times of covid they are more uh, vulnerable so that is what the the hashtag use heart uh, is meant for today uh, you too can run we are a sports management company one shop shop in running we have done about 1800 events in the last 6 years we have managed some of the best events in the country uh, we have a very marquee client list uh, we 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 do a whole bunch of stuff around running and the vision of you too can run is to promote running for good health uh, it it comes out of my own story uh, which is you know me as a chartered accountant i had uh, founded two bpos i exited them and after that in 2012 decided that i must do something for the cause of cardiac disease and uh, because i underwent a bypass surgery in 2007 and uh, since then i've been running half marathons regularly i've run about you know 150 is the number but 159 half marathons i've run so far i am also well certified i you know i'm the india's only level 2 running coach as certified by rrca which is the road running clubs of america so i got international accreditation and uh, based on my own practice and my own learnings and all that stuff i founded zippers club about 8 to 10 years back 8 8 yeah, 8 9 years back to train heart patients because i underwent a surgery in 2007 2008 thanks to dr god contractors guidance i i was able to run my first half marathon in standard chartered uh, standard chartered mumbai marathon in january of 2008 and then once i ran it it of course came in the papers and a lot of heart patients wanted to be healthy back in society you know kind of thing and then one thing led to another and that is how zippers club came to be formed and uh, we have now about 20 25 heart patients who regularly run marathons some have run full marathon some have gone into ultras uh, the oldest uh, patient is about you know pay is wrong to call them patient anymore <laughs> the oldest trainee is about 75 years of age um uh, the zippers club you know was founded because heart patients must not be relegated to a life of inactivity uh, they must serve to be useful members of the society they must lead a life of enthusiasm zest uh, 20 members we train about three times a week we have a restriction of running only four half marathons because sometimes it's very easy to get carried forward so we we choose four events to the year and we say that we'll run only four running events but we train three times a week we we do good mileage uh, you know when we are in training of course now because of covid everything is stopped we are all 60 65 plus so we are in the high risk category so no group training nothing but uh, this is this is what we do in a normal year and we are hoping that when normalcy comes back and we are we are able to get back to this uh, you know healthy lifestyle of ours as soon as possible the what is a heartbeat run the heartbeat run is not a run it's not like one day oh there's going to be a run you know everybody's going to run for this cause yeah we that will happen in due course of time but basically we look upon it as a movement to beat heart disease uh it it cannot be a one day even because like heart you know like like world heart day is one day or like father's day or daughter's day or you know it's not just one day you know you got to be you got to love your father all all his life you got to love your daughter all his all her life you know so in the same way you got to love your heart all throughout the year and this the 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 plan is to have a series of event challenges that will keep the motivation on to become healthy uh, we recognize that everything is about behavior change a lot of the focus will be on behavior change uh, there will be webinars there will be discussion forums uh, there will be things like ask the doctor there will be knowledge sharing and ultimately uh, i have in the last 5 7 years been always being asked ki why not start a zippers club in hyderabad in aurangabad in jalna you know the heart patients all over the country and all of them want to come back to running somewhere or the other they hear about me and what i do and the idea is to use this movement to scale up zippers club you know work with trainers in bombay and in all parts of the country and see that they train heart patients correctly doctor contractor is the best man to tell us how to go about doing that and with his guidance you know see that more and more heart patients uh, either prevent heart disease or if if heart disease has struck them come back and you know research back in life 
so so that is the aim of heartbeat run it encompasses everything around uh, cardiac disease so that uh, is uh, is uh, is what we intend to do and that is what the heartbeat run is about and that is what we are launching today on world heart day and uh, happy to have you here doctor contractor and uh, you know uh, you know rather than i mean you will tell us what is the importance of exercise but one observation that i made is that there is no ngo there is no non profit that works towards cardiac disease in the country you know you take cancer you take autism you know you have there are so many ngos you know you have, you have so many ngos fighting every corner of the cancer space but why is it that cardiac disease has got a vacuum that's a good question i'm not sure whether what i'm going to tell you is necessarily the right answer but it's yeah we are just we are surmising yeah <laughs> my my thoughts one is heart disease um you know is a disease which i i tell people sort of half jokingly half seriously is that it's the if i may say so the best serious disease to have why do i say that is because the large majority of people after they've suffered their event and obviously assuming that they have survived the event they can go on to lead very normal lives unaffected lives just the way you and the other members of the zipper club are showing right they can even be better than before which is a terminology i like to use often a lot of other diseases these chronic diseases like frankly cancer like stroke they i think tend to leave a much longer physical and mental impact so i think that's that's one reason why that emotional connect sometimes where ngo etc is concerned is more for things like cancer um also heart disease in many ways is a cluster of different conditions like you got diabetes is you know a condition which is a risk factor for heart disease but is a condition by itself you have uh blood pressure which is a condition by itself uh cholesterol so you know it's not it's not necessarily one entity it's several different entities which which encompass it also up until recently and i think that that it's a misconception that it's a disease of the well to do and a disease of the rich and therefore maybe that need for ngo support or or need for you know um financial funding maybe less compared to many others and that's not true because heart disease is the number one cause of death both in urban parts of india and in rural parts of india among the well to do among the not so well to do and i think the last point is a lot of people who have heart disease they can just like i said people can just live with it so often people are told oh you can't afford these expensive surgeries doesn't matter just take sort of medicine and live with it there is a lot of focus on children with heart disease because children have an emotive thing but those are of course congenital disease diseases of birth disease with birth defects which is very different from the kind of heart disease that we are talking about which is more a disease of the blockage to put it in simple language yes yes doctor i i sometimes get the feeling that you know uh, ngo activity is all about elevation of distress you know poverty those kind of things and uh, cardiac disease unless there is a death and then it's all over okay doesn't seem as dramatic and it doesn't seem to it's also seen as a rich man's uh, disease you know oh ye too much you put on fat kind of it deserves it kind of you know thing <laughs> kind of you know this but i have been you know ever since we started this thinking i have been looking at all the things that happen around cardiac disease and i'm actually actually you know i'm appalled and you know it makes my resolve even more stronger to do something because 80 deaths a day in bombay i mean 80 families don't have breadwinners or families and you don't know and it is coming anger and anger and i'm sure that you are you know you are on the you are in the turfs of cardiac disease <laughs> you are in the trenches of the cardiac disease battle and you are seeing this much more closer than us but uh, but um, you know there is there is families being affected we did the sanman run because we saw that policemen are dying because of covid uh, when we started doing the run we were about 48 people now there are about 230 policemen who have died because of covid but i am saying that how many policemen are dying because of cardiac disease i mean that's also equally large and their families also suffer equally as much you know uh, because suddenly the you know breadwinner has gone away so i personally feel that uh, 
the space to use marketing term is <laughs> is is uh, you know available the government also is doing very little about it and of course you know in such things you should not expect the government to do much unless there's a knee jerk kind of reaction so so i think that uh, it's a very underserved uh, place if you know 30% of our population has got uh, cardiac disease and 1.135 billion or whatever we're talking about a huge number you're talking about 30 crores of people having potentially heart disease in our country you know, and and the quality of life for them can become better so there's a lot of public health public uh, welfare kind of uh, this behind it uh, what what do you think are the key initiatives that get done around world heart day from what you have seen in the past so you know world heart day is a nice day to create awareness so when you open the newspapers you know today on world heart day you'll see different organizations or doctors giving messages about keeping your cholesterol under a certain number blood pressure sugar be more active all of that and uh, and i think the more public health messages that are out there the better it is i'm constantly surprised by and i don't know how to put this correctly by how little people often end up knowing um today whenever people ask me or the journalists call and i tell them okay what are the things you need to do when i say sort of walk more and you know keep sugar below so and so and cholesterol and i feel that this is such common information and we've been saying the same thing again and again and again and every publication and every magazine carries it so what is the new news but then when i come across so many patients even if they've not had an event and they're just like in a sort of a high risk preventive as we call it 40 45 year old people you know you know high highly placed individuals i'm actually surprised as to their lack of knowledge um of what say maybe a, you know even a cholesterol level should be or a bp should be i'm 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 surprised at the lack of knowledge and therefore it reinforces the fact that days like this are good for public health messaging hopefully the message should go beyond just one day because obviously one day is not going to make a difference if it's not followed up but at the same time it's nice to have a day i mean thanks to the day you and i are talking right and and you know hopefully some people will will reach will hear this and then uh, make a change yes doctor i fully agree with you because it's not just one day celebration so when we started doing this many people thought and many people think oh oh it's on world heart day is going to you know do a run i mean that's the easiest thing i mean we run this platform and we know how to do an event and it's all virtual now it's become even more easy in that way i mean i could have easily made a form got people to register run it somewhere given a t-shirt or whatever you know all those usual things could have been done but it's not that it's about behavior modification okay. and uh, and it has to be a year long exercise and it has to be you know knowledge dissemination uh, advocacy knowledge sharing it cannot be just uh, one single thing you know do an event and get out like today i, I looked at all the papers just to get a sense of what is there the economic times has got some small story the times of india has done a feature with with a commercial uh, you know entity uh, the economic times has done a commercial feature with a commercial entity and not name them okay uh, the midday is silent the bombay times is silent the mumbai mirror is silent so you know even new, this is the most leading cause of death and what is the media doing about it only if they had a commercial sponsor they did something about it otherwise all this it just it just you know taken like granted like train accidents you know they hota hai kind of thing <laughs> yeah. so so doctor final message you know on world heart day if 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 you wanted to give a message you know with all your background what would that message be to to people in oh, all all walks of life i mean i know it's going to be uh, repetitive but still you know one cannot stress enough <laughs> no uh... <clears throat> i think the one the first message would be to know where you stand in this right it means that just you as an individual need to kind of assess what your risk is and and hopefully once you assess your risk that can either reassure you which is a good thing or it can wake you up which is also a good thing and literally you can do it you know all mm -hmm. you need to know is have you had anybody in your family 
with heart disease, and especially if they've had it at a younger age, say below 60, right? Number two is if you're over 45 years old, that's considered an official risk factor. Number three is if you're smoking or taking tobacco, then that puts you at risk. And the answer to that is you just need to stop. This is one area of lifestyle where there is no moderation. You just need to stop. Um, so these number four is, are you being regularly active or not? So all of this does not require any technology. You don't need to go to a doctor, nothing, right? You yourself know about your families. Do you know your age? You know whether you're active or not. You know whether you're smoking or not. Then you check your body weight. Okay, most people have a weighing scale at home, or at least they ought to have a weighing scale at home. And you can just figure out whether it's appropriate for your height. There are a million BMI charts you can you know, go online and check. The only thing you need to do, which you may not be able to do yourself, is have your blood pressure taken, have your sugar measured, and have your cholesterol measured. And a sugar and a cholesterol, every lab on the corner will do for a very affordable rate. So once you see all of these and you know that most of your parameters are fine, then then that's a bit of a reassurance. You still need to be active. You need to exercise because obviously exercise is going to give you a lot of benefits besides heart disease. It's also going to help with cancer, uh, depression, kidney disease, all sorts of conditions exercise uh, will give you protection against. And on the other hand, if these numbers are high, then talk to your doctor. There are also a lot of online risk calculator tools. So if you just say, you know, how to calculate my risk for heart disease, a simple terminology like that, there are two or three. The Framingham is the one from America, which is the most popular. But some of the ones from the UK are better because they've designed some which have specifically got South Asians, which is our part of the world, um, their risk. Because our risk is different. Unfortunately, you may or may not know this is that our risk is higher than the risk of Westerners. And we always think that, oh, it's the Westerners which get things like heart disease. That's not true. Our risk is higher. So some of these risk calculators which are developed specifically in England have taken Asian or South Asian is the correct word, ethnicity into account, and they may be more accurate. So you could use those or just simply talk to your doctor if any of your parameters are out of control. Because even they're out of control, it matters how much out of control, right? If you say cholesterol should be less than 200, you could be 205 or you could be 295 and both have got very different meaning. Good, Dr. Uh, thank you. Uh, just, you know, uh, before I you know, uh, announce the website, we have a small three-minute film about Zippers Club. It's very interesting to see that film and just show it for our audience. Okay. <clears throat> We are the people who are zipping across life. <laughs> Say hello to the Zipper Club. They're all over 50 years old. Hmm, reclaiming their youth, are they? The oldest people in that group is 73. Okay, senior citizens jogging. What's the big deal? Uh, they're not just jogging. They run marathons. Marathons? Okay, now that's impressive. So we do about four runs in a year. And of course, the main event is the standard chartered Mumbai Marathon. All of us are heart patients. Many have undergone bypasses. What the what? After the open heart surgery is done, when the scars remain on the chest, it looks like a zipper. Three times a week, 20 kilometers. Sounds a bit... Uh... Risky? Is it safe to run the next day? The answer is absolutely no. Is it safe to run after six months? The answer is probably yes. So it depends upon how you recover. It depends upon, you know, what your lifestyle was before you had the bypass. There are people who say, I look at Mr. Roswal. At 72, he runs half marathon. 
Look at Surendra Bai. You know, at 69, he's so fit, he can do so much sit-ups. There's like a member called Sajid Bai. For six years, he was a member of a cardiac rehab in a very elite hospital, and he never lost a kg. But in the last six months, he's lost 10 kg. Most of us had paunch. We are overweight. We have all come to normal, and we are enjoying it. I realized so late in life that you know being active is far more better than getting going under the knife. No activity will continue unless there is fun. So fun is non-negotiable. So if it has to be fun. There has to be humor and there has to be something that is challenging and something that gives them fun from a sense of achievement. You have every right to be the healthiest you at whatever age in your life. Nobody can take that right away from you except you yourself. No fuss, no excuses, get on with it. Thank you, doctor. I don't have seen this before, doctor. Nicely done. No, 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 no this not. got made about three like years it. back. <laughs> yeah. I'm not surprised. I'm not yeah. seeing it. Very nice. So it's a nice one. So I thought it just you know kind of captures the essence yeah, of the yeah. day well. <laughs> Positive, forward-looking, you know, kind of video. So, doctor, before we sign off, uh, any final words to 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 the uh, audience? No, I think that this idea that that you launched of it being a, a movement as opposed to a one day thing i think is great you know at the reliance foundation hospital we've been associated with you to can run over the last two years for the navy marathon half marathon that is a very nicely organized event and we've you know, been happy to participate unfortunately given the situation this year i doubt that a physical event is going to take place but i'm happy that you're doing something around world heart day and I think that in terms of the education that goes into building up towards these events, you know, the hospital would be very happy to be a part of it. And um, I think one simple message, if we can give to everybody, especially in these COVID times, is just move more, you know, and, and more is a relative word. So we have this mantra of 10,000 steps a day. But today, when people are stuck at home, I've seen some numbers and people are barely doing even 2,000. If you're doing 2,000, I don't think you need to do 10,000 the next week. But, you know, why not try for three or why not try for four? So just move more. Wherever you are, you can just be a little bit more active. Um, I think an important message in these times is also you need to obviously try and stay infection-free. The good news is if you're exercising outdoors, automatically your risk of infection outdoors, number one, is much lower than indoors. Number two, if you're outdoor and you're wearing a mask, especially if you're doing moderate activities, it's like a brisk walk, please keep the mask on and your risk again will be very, very minimal. Number three, if you're doing intense activity like running or running at a faster pace, you might feel uncomfortable. You might need to, what I call, lower the mask. Don't remove it, right? So this is on and this is lowering it. If you can be in a zone where nobody's around you for at least six to ten feet and you can maintain that early mornings, etc., then that's fine. When you go into a zone where there are again people there and you cannot maintain that distance, just sort of put it back on. So this pandemic should not be an excuse for you not to exercise. You can get creative about it. Last message is God forbid you are one of those people who have um suffered a large number are asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic. Once you come back. Go back very gradually to your exercise because unfortunately we are seeing that two months and three months later people are having some lung effects, are having some heart effects. So don't sort of jump back into where you were within just a week or two weeks. Take a little bit of time to get there. And if you can, you know, get a couple of tests done, talk to your doctor even, you know, two months later after you recovered. But I think staying positive is the most important thing. And as you shown in the video and a lot of the messages that we spoke about. I think heart disease can easily be, you know, defeated may not be the best word, but we can certainly reduce the intensity, reduce the prevalence by a big amount by just taking simple measures. And it doesn't have to be you know, complicated. Thank you, Doctor.
thank you very much uh, you know we 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 went past, past the time a little bit uh, there are a lot of chat messages we'll respond to them separately there is a question on running but you know this is not the forum to answer a very specific question on running but there are messages from all over the this and i'm sure that you can see the chat so thank you everybody thanks to our audience thank you prashant thank you anirudh uh, vipin will will separate i'll separately reply to that uh, question of yours about running in rhythm and uh, you know this i'll take it for the thank you anand pete thank you sajid bhai thank you kotari prashant thank you very much thanks everybody any final words doctor from you otherwise we close no i think everybody stay healthy get active and uh, you know stay tuned for kind of further news and events and please participate with friends and family thank you very much bye everybody thanks a lot thank, thank you bye bye